Hey there, everybody. Tanya Guest is in here, your nutritionist and fitness coach with Fit Nutrition. Hope everybody had a wonderful Canada Day celebration and uh, and happy 4th of July to all our U.S. listeners. Thanks for tuning in today. Please let me know where you're watching from, Canada, U.S., any of the other countries, many other countries that we have here in the group living the fit life and uh, and loving food freedom, right? Who doesn't love that? So I hope we all had a little bit of food freedom over this past week with celebrations with family and friends. I know I did. And then three hours later, we are back on track, right? That's the beauty about this. Keeping our plates spinning is not the old diet mentality where we are, you know, thinking, oh my gosh, I had that ice cream and then I had that other thing and then I had that dessert and, and then I had, oh my gosh, when I went to a barbecue, oh my goodness, the whole week is just is a, is, is a write-off. I'm going to wait and start again on Monday. That is the diet mentality. That's what happens when you don't understand your food. We know better here and we understand food. We know how it works. And we get that, that in, you know what, life happens and there's, there's going to be moments, there's celebrations, there's interruptions, there's all of those things, but whatever happens, happens. And then three hours later, we get to make a better choice that will serve our body right? If we've already served our soul, we need to come back to serving our body. And we need both of those things, right? So I just want to touch on that a little bit, just to remind anybody and just to put that in your ear. Maybe you're new and, and you're still kind of thinking, oh, you know, that that uh, the, the peanut gallery, I call it, is on your shoulder telling you, hey, hey, you know, you did a whole bunch of bad things and, and you need to just not worry about it. You, you know, you've sabotaged everything and it's not going to work. And uh, maybe you can start again on Monday. Nope. Kick the peanut gallery off your shoulder. You can start right now to get back on track. And um, and food is never good or bad, right? We know that here. Food is never good or bad. It's uh, a protein, a fat, or a carb. And you either ate and served your body or you ate and served your soul. And, you know, we need fuel for both. And so, we you know, we know that. We also know that we need more to fuel our body we should be doing that more often than fueling our soul because it's just a healthier balance. We're going to have more nutrition in our body. And when we have more nutrient dense foods in there, we are a healthy, healthier being and healthy bodies don't retain the weight, right? So you want to promote the health. So with that diving in today's topic, I'm talking about pharmacy with an F versus pharmacy with a PH because food is medicine. You know, regardless of how you, you know, you might think, well, really, is it can be medicine? Because you're always thinking about medicine written on a prescription. Well, what happens if we were to, you know, write a prescription for food for people? And that's kind of what we do here, right? It's kind of what we do with this approach, living PFC and, and eating our proteins, fats, and carbs in the right portions and the right frequency throughout the day. It's kind of what we do. We have that prescription for health and we, you know, with the, with those, um, those off off plan times of celebrations and appreciation meals worked in so that we get the best of both worlds. Now, outside of this group and outside of a lot of areas, the dieting world would have you believe that no, you you can't do anything. Food is not medicine. It doesn't matter. You just have to eat this many calories. It doesn't really matter what you put in per se. Um, that you just need this number of calories or you need to remove these things because they're all bad and then you'll be fine forever. But, you know, you, you can't deviate from this plan ever or you're not going to get results. And so that's really not creating a culture of health inside your body. It's creating um, this horrible structure like a prison where you're stuck there. This is the only thing you can ever do. And that's not what we want. The other thing you know, as we're talking about food pharmacy versus pharmacy, the, the F versus the pH, we know, I know personally from in my life and in my family's lives that food, the F pharmacy food can be medicine. It really is medicine. It can either be medicine or it can be poison. Each time we're fueling our body, we're, we're doing something. We're either doing, you know, a really great job of putting nutrients in or, you know, we're putting something that's kind of food-like, a food-like substance, and then we deal with that, okay? So just being on that page, but pharmacy with the pH, where you're going and getting a prescription to control something, um, you know, to, to get a result, 
because you're frustrated or you, um, your, your doctor may have said, well, you need this medication. And I'm not knocking medications. Medications have done well for mankind and we do need some of them for sure. But I would be very cautious and I would be very skeptical and I would ask a lot of questions if just because I am a few years older than I was, you know, a couple of years ago, and now somebody is telling me, well, you need to take this medicine for the rest of your life because there's nothing you can do to turn that back. You know, it doesn't really matter what you eat. It's, you, you know, you're going to have this for life. Get used to it. Here's your prescription. Come back every three months. We'll check you and we'll, we'll refill your script. So, and don't just take my word for it. I'm diving in here because, uh, because of Ozempic. So I'm sure many of you here in this group have heard of Ozempic, or maybe you have a family member or a friend or something that's mentioned Ozempic. And I'm talking about this because I had a call. I, I've been having calls with people and talking about Ozempic and, you know, I'm seeing it pop up everywhere. I'm on um, email lists for different health articles and things like that. And they're all talking about it. And it's not so great. What, what's happening out there. So let's just break it down just a, just a little quick bit. I did something on this, you know, recently, but I felt it was super important to come back and address it specifically and talk about just really what we can do. You know, there's the, all this stuff being prescribed with that thought that, well, you're going to have this forever. You must be using this forever. You're never going to stop being able to use it rather than, okay, you have a condition and, and let's see what we can do over here with some food. And if that doesn't help, maybe we might have to supplement with a little bit of medication to get you started. And then we can take you off of that. There's, there doesn't seem to be any wiggle room in this sort of space when it comes to overweight and obesity, diabetes, cholesterol, high blood pressure, all of those. Um, yeah, all of the metabolic diseases. Isn't that interesting? So pharmacy, the big pharma, you've heard that expression. They are paid well you know, when, when, when their products are sold and, and they're governing the prices and on all of those kinds of things. So without sounding like a crazy conspiracy nut person, because you know what, it, it's only a conspiracy theory if it doesn't happen. If it's already happening, it's, you know, it's not a, it's not a theory anymore. It's just happening, but it could be a conspiracy and the conspiracy is, is tanking your health. I was listening to Dr. Mark Hyman interviewing a gentleman named Callie Means, who used to be who used to work in government as one of those people who were advocating for um, for funding for medications and things like that. And he's since turned around and has a very interesting website and podcast all about uh, coming back to natural health and what, you know, as he was seeing things happening, lobbying and all the monies and things like that being filtered towards um, uh, filtering towards these uh, towards medications and especially they were talking about Ozempic. So the two of them were on a podcast talking together about this. It was super fascinating. I did share the link of that podcast in here uh, a couple days ago. If you have some time, please go back and watch it. It is great or listen to it. It's an audio one actually. So you can listen to it while you're out walking at the gym, on the treadmill, whatever. That's where I listen to things is when I'm doing those kinds of things. And then I can get some more information for you. And you can get some for yourself. So what I was, um, I just wanted to bring to you is that um, what what he was saying, what what this uh, Callie Means was saying, was that what happens is that these medications are out there, and um, the question that he posed is, okay, first of all, let me go with some stats. I'm just kind of rambling here, but I'm going to come back to some stats. I've got some notes here, so I'm going to come back to the stats. So the manufacturing company of Ozempic. Let's preface this first by saying that 80% of Americans, and so I'm going to I'm going to say North America. I think he was specifically stating US. However, Canada is not far behind people. So, you know, we're just a we're a very close second, which is not a good place to be. So, let's just go with these stats here. 80% of people are currently overweight or obese. So, that's a huge market for something that will help people lose weight and, you know, turn back their, you know, restore some, some health and reverse some disease, right? Because with, with the overweight and obese, as time goes on, of course, the, um, the prevalence that you're going to get X, Y, Z disease gets stronger and stronger and stronger, the longer you do something that's not serving your body, right? Because it's breaking us down. It's full of inflammation, all those kinds of things we know about, which is a good topic for another day. However, okay. So 80% of people are overweight or obese. 
manufacturing company of Ozempic. So I'm going to just pick on Ozempic, especially because it's super popular out there in the news. Just so you know, Wagovi is another one that's exactly the same as Ozempic, just another name brand. Interestingly enough, Wagovi is prescribed for children. Ozempic isn't, but it's the same thing coming from, yeah. Okay. Just so you know, which is a whole other podcast as well with the children, because children should not be on any sort of weight loss drugs or any sort of diet. They should be educated on what food is and how it serves their body. So the manufacturing company of Ozempic has paid $30 million directly to doctors. They have this paper trail. There is, this is a thing. And they, doctors are able to take money as a consulting fee. So it really is beneficial to any, you know, any doctor or clinic or whatever who has a clinic or a practice based around being overweight and obese, it is very beneficial to them to have this drug available for people, right? So the consulting fees alone, there was, and this one, this, that, I, I don't know a number for Canada, but in the States, there were 420,000 separate payments that were registered to doctors, 420,000. So for those people that sometimes are, you know, they're thinking, well, my doctor's prescribing this, it must be, you know, that's, that's just what I need right now. I would say to you, follow the money. I would say, ask, ask lots of questions. I have told my clients this for years. Please know that whoever you have as a healthcare professional, whether it is your doctor, whether it's a surgeon, whether it's a naturopath, a chiropractor, a massage therapist, a physiotherapist, you hire a nutritionist, you have a personal trainer, whatever it is that you have, you are in charge. You are the person who hired them, right? You are the boss. You are not at their mercy. You have hired them. So they are beholden to you and your questions. So please, you know, be an advocate for your health. Ask a lot of questions. So if you're not, if you're being prescribed one of these things, or if you're being, you know, if someone's suggesting that you take this, please ask them, well, do you get, you know, are you getting paid for this to prescribe me this? Um, what are the, what are the, um, the statistics on it? What is the safety on it? What are the side effects going to be? Have those conversations right then and there. Because although, you know, if you're in that desperate situation, and I totally understand, I've talked to many, many people who have been in desperate situations that they are just so, so frantic and so upset and so distraught and so not happy with themselves that they just want to lose the weight and they don't care how they do it. Trust me when I tell you that if you're looking for that magic pill, it will be magic for a moment. But for the lifetime, you're going to, it's it's like any old diet and it's going to come back and it, and to, to haunt you or harm you or both. And so I say that with love so that you will uh, ask questions next time you're in that situation. And I just also wanted to, to talk about, because I mentioned um, pharmacy versus pharmacy and the medication and the food. So we know that, so Ozempic was designed to stabilize blood sugar for people, for diabetics. We know here, right, that when we stabilize our blood sugar, that if you need to lose weight and your body gets in balance, it will start to lose weight. We also know that an unhealthy body won't release weight. So if, you know, you're, event, you're going to actually start losing weight right off the hop, for sure. You know, it might take a little while. If you're taking Ozempic, it's going to take, it might even take up to three months before it starts to work. But if it's working, I say working because it's medically induced and there's no nutrition and focus on the principles of health that you need to restore in your body and getting rid of the inflammation and, um, you know, putting more nutrients in your body, filling your nutritional gaps, hydrating, having enough sleep, getting rid of stress, all of those things, you know, we call them our six plates here, all of those. If you're not doing those, that result that you may be getting is a false result because it's not going to stay because we know that a, an unhealthy body won't release the weight. It's actually going to gain some weight. So you might lose a little bit. It's going to get stuck there. And eventually you're, you're going to get stuck. And this happened uh, to a lady I just spoke with the other day. She got started on Ozempic. She was prescribed it. 
She's been taking it. It's astronomically expensive. It's thousands of dollars a month. Um, and she's lost six, maybe seven pounds. She's dieted her whole life since she has been 10 years old. So she's very desperate. And, and it stopped working. But there was no education around nutrition whatsoever. And, and if she's not putting in anything to nourish her body at a cellular level, to fill those nutritional gaps, to put back what's been missing, right? Our vehicle, our body is our vehicle that drives us through life. Anybody who knows me knows me. I've, I've said this several times. Your car in the driveway, you need to do that maintenance, right? You take it in for the oil change. You get the tires rotated. You fill it up with gas. You wash it. You check the fluids. You repair the brakes, all those kinds of things so that it doesn't break down. You're filling in its gaps. As you use it, things break down and you fix it up and there, there you go again. If you don't fill those gaps and fix up the things that need to be repaired inside your body and just try and continue on, what if it's like your car, what's going to happen, right? If we don't do those repairs, if we don't do that maintenance, if we don't keep up on the things that we need to in order to create a strong, healthy uh, body or a vehicle that runs properly, right? What's going to happen? Okay, so just taking a medication, just taking a pill, having a shot, wearing a patch, whatever it is, is not going to put the nutrients and the nourishment in your body. It doesn't address the sleep issues. It doesn't address the stress. It doesn't address the water. It doesn't, the hydration. It doesn't address nutritional gaps. It only addresses the number on the scale. Okay, so I'm just going to let that sink in for a minute. It only addresses the number on the scale. And if we know that there are six components to our health, the six plates, let me just bring that up here. For those of you who are not familiar with the six plates, let's give you a visual. If you're not addressing these six plates, right? Nutrition, food is our foundation. So if we're not addressing proper nutrition, exercise, sleep, water, stress, and filling in those nutritional gaps, then if you're only going by the number on the scale, and you're limiting your nutrition because that's usually what happens and you're not focusing on all of these other things think about the guy at the circus when he's doing that with the plates up there what happens if one starts to wobble and he ignores it it comes crashing down so we can't just focus on one thing ever or we're going to we're going to have an awful hard time the juggling will not happen and things will come crashing down around you and you'll be back to square one where you started so that being said, okay, back to pharmacy with an F. So we just covered pharmacy with a pH. Pharmacy with an F now tells us that we know, right? So this is, think about a diabetic. This is, and they were targeting diabetics too with that drug. But think about what a diabetic needs, what they've been told, you know, since the beginning of when they were uh, diagnosed. You need to stabilize your blood sugar. It's very, very important. And that's what we do here with your proteins, your fats, and your carbs together in the right portions and the right frequencies. Now, are is all food created equal? No, just like we know, all calories are not the same, right? You can have two or 300 calories of potato chips, or you can have two or 300 calories of um, chicken or steak and some vegetables and some salad or rice, and, and you can have a very nutritious meal as opposed to empty calories in that potato chip bag. They're all gonna have the same amount of calories. Which one do you think is gonna sustain you longer? Right. So putting that food together in that right way stabilizes your blood sugar, creates hormonal balance. So it takes some of the internal stress and the inflammation off your body because your organs and systems are not fighting with each other to function. They are working as they were designed to function in synergist in synergy with each other, synergistically together. OK, so they're not being forced to do anything. It's happening naturally. And that's where you want to be. So we can use food to reverse disease, to stabilize our blood sugar, to put in more nourishment, to remove inflammation, to hydrate our bodies, to keep our cells nice and plump instead of squished up like raisins. We can use all those wonderful natural things and then some natural supplements, herbs, antioxidants, green teas, vitamins, things like that to fill in our nutritional gaps, to improve our immune function, to improve absorption of nutrients, to promote nitric oxide production, to help um, heal the gut and heal leaky gut and, and, and create a healthier, happier microbiome in your gut. Because, um, you know, we all know that the health comes from the gut, which then 
you know, creates your serotonin melt, all the feel good hormones and the GABA and things like that in your brain. And so if we're not doing that, we're simply doing one thing focused on one thing on the scale and that's all. So just wanted to, as food for thought, right? It's food. You can use food and it's going to be your pharmacy and it will. And I've seen it in my own life, in my family's life, in my clients, my practice here. I've seen how it can reverse disease. I was talking with a client this morning who has, um, who's having acid reflux and just by changing a few things, she's no longer having that digestive issue. She's no longer feeling like her stomach is hard as she said. It felt like a football in her stomach. Every time she bent over to put her socks on, how uncomfortable is that? She said, it doesn't feel like that anymore. Okay. But she's been on, um, she's been on prescription meds for years, but it wasn't until she changed that changed her, 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 what she was putting in her, in her body, into her stomach bucket it wasn't until she changed that, that she's felt these physical changes and eliminated the acid reflux. So food is medicine. So I just want to pop in here also and talk about, because I'm in Canada, I found, so I talked about the US stats, I've got some things from Canada. So Health Canada here in Canada is responsible for Canada's national health policy. And earlier this month, they issued, a, or back in sort of, we're July now, so in June, they issued a warning this month that for the use of that the use of Ozempic, I'm just going to read it here. Uh, the use of Ozempic for weight loss, quote, is not an improved indication. And that in doing so, using it for weight loss, meaning it can cause, quote, serious side effects. And so the list are includes pancreatitis, severely low blood sugar levels, which is not good either, uh, gallbladder issues, severe allergic reactions, thyroid tumors, kidney problems, including kidney failure. And so this article that I found on Epic Times uh, that's reporting on this, excellent reporting, by the way. Uh, I always like to, to give a little shout out to where I find my sources. So in May, there was an update, the US Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, most people know it as, they said that even though, so this now, Wagovi is the, uh, the, the partner drug to Ozempic, right? Same make makeup, different name are approved for adults and children age 12 and older to help deal with the obesity issues. The medication is, quote, only available with a prescription. The problem with this is that according to, you know, to be able to get the prescription, they, you know, go through a questionnaire and all those kinds of, to get it, you know, approved and all of those kinds of things so that you're eligible for this, for this prescription drug. You literally just have to check the box that said nothing else worked. So if you try to diet, and it didn't work for you, you can check the box and you're going to get it. Are you going to get any nutritional uh, advice with this? No, there is no nutritional advice that comes with it. What does come with it, though, is it alters your relationship with food. The drug can change people's relationship with food. So uh, Professor Jens, I'm not sure if I'm saying this, Yen Yul Host. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. A scientist whose work led to the development of drugs like Ozempic warns that people who use the medication can lose their appetite as well as lose the pleasure of eating. So he says that the craving for some people is taken away when they have drugs like Ozempic. So the, it works like mimicking your glucagon protein. And so it activates the receptors and raises insulin to manage the blood sugar. At the same time, the feelings of hunger are artificially minimized. So you, what you have here is you have something that's chemically uh, changing the level of your blood sugar, but physiologically, your body is not hungry. You're not putting nutrients in. So we know that when we don't put nutrients in, what happens to our body? Where is it going to get the fuel to turn to glucose to send up to the brain? It's getting it from your muscle. So if it's turned off your hunger signal and it's an appetite suppressant, it's telling you that you shouldn't eat, which is exactly what happened to the lady I spoke with the other day, telling me about her Ozempic journey so far. And she says, yeah, I'm just not hungry. I just don't, you know, I don't really want to, to eat. It's not, food isn't interesting me at all. How can this be healthy if we have a vehicle, our body, that needs nourishment, 
every so often throughout the day, just like your car, when you're driving and you need, you know, the gas pedals on, you don't stop, stop, stop like this. You keep a nice steady flow so that you have a nice smooth ride. It's very enjoyable. You keep, you know, all, all your engines running smoothly and everything works well. Same with your body. So if we're not putting the fuel in, your energy levels are down. Your sleep is not good because you don't have enough nourishment in your body. You're not properly nourishing your gut. Uh, you can get brain fog and get tired. Your energy is low because you don't you don't have enough caloric intake to to output any energy. So a lot of times you'll barely make it through the day and arrive home exhausted. Again, it's it's another diet. And it's really not serving people. So I just wanted to come on here today and talk about this um, because you all know that my mission is to help end, end the dieting madness, right? Just to um, teach people how to use food to stabilize your hormones um, and your blood sugar and to, to be able to eat the foods you love in a way that's going to do that and serve your body, fuel your body, fuel your soul, and live with food freedom so you can eat those things you love in a way that works for you. So you can achieve your goals with your health, with your weight, and not have to compromise on things, especially not your health. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if you're doing something that you, you know deep down is probably not the right thing to be doing, so just so do it, just look internally and do a little deep, deep soul search in there and see, you know, is, does this really make sense? So ask yourself three questions. Does, uh, you know, is what I'm doing based in science? There might be some science around it. Okay. Is what I'm doing uh, make sense to me so that I can do it for life? And the third one is, would I let my child do this? If you had a little child, would you let them do that? Okay. So those are the three questions I want you to think about. And then come up with your own conclusion on whether you should be using that or not. All right. So I'd love to hear your comments down below. Drop them in the chat there. And I will definitely come back and answer them. Thanks for joining me here today on Fit Nutrition Podcast. Have an awesome Wednesday. And we'll see you back here next week. Same time, same place.